What's up guys, Vicaddy here, and today we guys a brand new Team Boonie video where what we're doing is we're building a team based around Cranberry the Mega Latias. Now if you're excited for this, don't forget to hit the like button down below, I would really, really appreciate it. So now, the set that we do have is a Calm Mindset, and I really, really like the set because there's so many teams you can set up on, you get a few Calm Minds up and you just sweep through them, it's absolutely insane. So the move set is Calm Mind Roost, Hin Power Fighting, and Stored Power with 248 in HP, 180 in defense with a bold nature, which means we get a really, really good defensive mon. The Spadef goes through the roof, it's absolutely insane. And then finally, 80 in speed, which allows us to outspeed Adamant Excadrill by one point, which I think is probably a good speed tier to go for. Um, and that's my thoughts on that. Now, I have actually had several goes at recording this, trying to make the team for you, but when I've been testing it, I've just not been happy, and I would much rather get a decent team out for you guys, rather than make ones that, they, each one had sort of various flaws to them, and I've been working most of this week trying to get a really solid Mega Latias team out for you guys, and I think I finally got to the point where I'm really, really happy with how it plays, and uh, there doesn't seem to be any major glaring weaknesses from there, because I had problems with Weavile first time, then I ended up having problems with Mega Manetric, and I would, as I said, I would much rather get a quality team builder out for you guys, where I've already built and tested the team, and I've scrapped the original live team builder, than I would um, just give you guys a load of rubbish. So, um... One, so when I was building the team, originally this had sub, and I found I had huge problems with things like bishops and stuff like that, and dark types, because obviously I can't touch them. Now, him power fighting actually works incredibly well, because if they bring in a bishop on your Latias, you go for the Calm Mind when you Mega up. Now they're in a really sticky situation, because if they suck a punch, you get another Calm Mind up. If they go for the uh, go for knockoff or something like that, you outspeed, you bop them one shot with him power fighting. You can also take a knockoff as well, so it's not a massive problem. So it allows you just to handle bishops, just completely shut them down, and is really, really good from that aspect. And I do really, really like that, which is why I decided to give him power fighting. It also allows you to beat Tita. You can um, beat that as well with your Calm Mind boosts and stuff like that. But Calm Mind, you get like two boosts up, and it's absolutely insane, because you're plus two, Stored power goes up to a hundred base power, so yeah, really hits like a truck. Two combines is like the ideal amount. You don't really need to set up more than that. It um, the only weaknesses it does have is maybe um, blisses or chances with toxic. You have to try and you can't really get enough uh, sort of him power uh, combines up to actually get stored power to be to it carrying it. Uh, it does take a few combine boosts for that, but apart from that, it does work incredibly well. So that's the obviously the mom we're building around. So. One thing I did start to think about was, right, what sort of things give this guy a lot of grief? So, obviously, the Latty Twins themselves give them give it a lot of grief because they can Draco Meteor do a huge amount. And even then, you're having to roost up on their Draco Meteors. If they get one crit, then that's it. You're done. You're done. Like, um, for example, at plus one, a, a Latias Life Orbed Draco Meteor does 60%. And you don't really want that. Yeah, if you it basically, if you if they crit you, that's, that's it. You're over. So... Why, what I wanted was a mon that could deal with that, could deal with things like Starmie. Starmie was another thing I'd like uh, to deal with, and uh, potentially things like Cress and stuff like that. So, a Pokemon that works extremely well with Cranberry is Tyranitar. On top of this as well, it starts by giving us a, um, a check to Mega Manectric, which sounds a little bit weird, but what you, but the way T-Tar works, obviously, it's so specially defensive. It can take almost any hit. Uh, you can switch in, you can take a Volt Switch. Like, it's, it's not ideal. But um, it does give us a good answer to that. And you can Pursuit Trap them as well. Because if I remember rightly, you do outslow them. Which means they go for the Volt Switch, you Pursuit Trap, boom. That's it. They got, you know, they, they, they take a huge amount of damage. Um, but this guy works really, really well in conjunction with Cranberry here. Um, so I go for Pursuit, Crunch, um, uh, Stone Edge. And then I'm a big fan of Superpower. Because this gives me another check to Bishop. If Bishop sets up an SD, I can take a Sucker Punch. I can Otako with Superpower. It also allows me to catch other T-Tars and um, things like that. And surprising number of Excadrills, even when they're not Scarfed, stay in. Like Balloon Excadrills, it's quite surprising. But um, that's the set that I've decided to run for this. And uh, yeah, it, as, as so far, it seems to be working really, really nicely in conjunction. So I started to think about my Walkor. And um, what sort of physical hits Cranberry might have to t uh, be faced against that it won't be able to deal with? Things like Megazard, um, what other things? Uh, oh, Excadrill is another option, uh, another thing as well. So I really wanted something that was a really good physical wall, would be able to give up, give rocks and stuff like that. And as you guys can imagine, Hippowden 
Hippowdon works really, really well on this team. In, even in conjunction with T-Tar, it's got really, like, fair synergy, actually. Um, you know, they, they, they sound like they're going to cross over quite badly. They do have a, a water weakness and a uh, grass weakness between them, both of which Cranberry can handle, so it's not the worst thing in the world. So, in terms of the item, I go for Leftovers with um, Sand Stream on this guy. With Earthquake, uh, Stone Edge, because that allows us to hit things like Talon Flames and stuff like that. Uh, uh, Stealth Rocks, probably arguably the best move in the game, and finally Slack Off as well. Mixed Wall Set works really, really nicely. So, you go 248 HP, um, 112 in Spadef. Death. I know I use this guy a lot, but he works absolutely fantastically in this uh with this team and i wouldn't want to cut this team short just to use a different mon uh so that's that's our physical wall going on there so i then start to think about this and see right what weaknesses i got going on so i've still got an ice weakness building here which doesn't isn't really nice at all um i've got a big weakness to azumarill big big weakness to azumarill so after thinking about that i decided right Probably the best one to go for is a Tentacruel, because Tentacruel has good synergy with her Powdown. I've got Cranberry, and it synergizes well with Cranberry as well, because any Psychic moves to, you know, uh, directed towards it, Cranberry can take. Um, any Earthquakes, Cranberry can take. Her Powdown takes Earthquakes as well really nicely. So, as a pairing, it works really, really nicely. So, I decided to go for Tentacruel here, and um, let me just see. Uh, we're going to go on the Smogon Analysis, because it's got the exact EV spread in there. Uh, let's see. So... Um, it was the OU set, because this allows you to outspeed Azumarill, and uh, that gives us a nice Azumarill switching, which is a rare thing to have on teams. Um, and I really like Toxic Spikes on here. Now, acid, but this, the choice between Acid Spray and Toxic Spikes, uh, sorry, yeah, between Acid Spray and Sludge Bomb is a really tricky one. I personally feel Sludge uh, Acid Spray works better, because Clefable's a problem, especially with my team so far. This stops Calm Mind Clefable completely. Because you can just Acid Spray, you resist Moonblast, and you just whistle it down, and then you force switches. Same with Acid Spray, you just you just force a ton of switches. Uh, on top of that as well, if they if you switch into the Azumarill, it's very unlikely the Azumarill is going to be staying in. You can Acid Spray it, and then it's in a whole load of trouble if it decides to stay in. Or it will end up switching out, and uh, Acid Spray will do the same effect. Uh, Toxic Spikes as well works really nicely in conjunction with Cranberry, because Cranberry is really quite stally. So being able to just stall out po uh, other Pokemon with Toxic Spikes is, is really, really nice to have. Um, so that's the wall core done, and it works really, really well. I know it's mainly, f so the EV spreads are more towards the physical side, but it does work really, really well. So the next thing I was thinking was actually outside of my choice T-Tar, my team's incredibly slow. I've not got any Volturn, and I don't really have anything that's like Nuke on the special side. So, a Pokemon that I decided would work really, really nicely is Tornadus Ferian. Because Tornadus gives us insane speed, and on top of that as well, just hits incredibly hard. Gives us knockoff options, uh, U-turn options, and I'm going to go for the Assault Vest set. Because I think the Assault Vest set gives you a lot more longevity than the Life Orb set, which is what we need for this team. Because the whole team is based around taking out uh, Dark Types and Counters to Cranberry, and then Cranberry basically sweeps from that. So the Assault Vest set gives you a bit more longevity and allows you to handle those. And um, this is the set we end up running. So Superpower there allows us to hit things like Tyranitars, um, the Blobs, and stuff like that. Knock Off obviously is great utility. U-Turn as well just gives you really good, uh, you know, you can switch in, switch out. And uh, Hurricane as well just absolutely nukes things. It's just really, really nice to have. Uh, obviously got to watch out for the Mischance, but um, apart from that it works. Yeah, it hits decently hard when it actually hits. <laughs> it's probably the best thing to do. So, from here, I was happy with the five that I had. And then I started thinking, actually, what am I really quite weak to? So, one thing I'm relatively weak to is uh, potentially Weavile. Because Weavile, if we run max... Uh, let, let's let's just show uh, Weavile's speed here. So, if Weavile meet, reaches uh, max speed, it gets to 383 speed. Which Tyranitar, unfortunately, does not match. So... Weavile with Low Kick could cause a serious amount of problems with this team. So I need, an, ideally, some sort of Fairy type or something like that to be able to handle it. And Clefable, first of all, just sprung to mind. But then I was thinking about it and I was thinking, I don't really want just something that can switch into that. Like, the, you need to be more offensive than reactive. Um, you want something that's like a fairly like reliable switch or at least forces this out. So a Pokemon that I decided to go for here was Sylveon. A Pokemon that's not really used uh, nowadays 
it, it seems to have fallen out of favor, but the set I really want that works really nicely is the specs one, because I love having a nuke button on teams where you just click it and it just nukes something. And um, so this is the set I decided to go for. Now, because of this, it's difficult to know whether to go for Stone Edge or Whirlwind because uh, at the minute we have got a bit of a weakness to SD um, SD Sizzle, Mega Sizzle. So actually, I think Whirlwind is a better bet here because we do have other ways to uh, handle things uh, that are fly. You know, we've got most of the Levitators, you know, like Latte Twins and stuff like that. Titar can handle Titar handles flying types and uh, also can switch into Talon Flames and stuff. So I think Whirlwind fits better on the team uh, as a second fort. And because of that, we've got an art kind of... A... It's always difficult to know which Him Power you should run. Um, him Power Ground would be nice because that gives us an answer to um, uh, Heat Trans and stuff like that. And uh, for that reason, I actually find Him Power Ground on this team works a lot better. But Tom Pass allows us to actually get initiative, a bit like U-Turn and things like that. And a um, little bit of speed creep going on there. And this thing just absolutely nukes teams. If they don't have a Fairy Resist, then... Honestly, it's just like a nuke button. You just need to try and get it in and each time it will get a kill. As long as it can take a hit, it's got a decent amount of bulk there to actually be able to take hits as well. So that's really, really nice. So uh, this is the team that I had. It seems to have solved a lot of problems that I had before and just hopefully is a thousand times better than those previous teams because they just, each one of them just had this inherent weakness and I just couldn't try and fix the team based around it. But anyway, I hope you guys do enjoy the team. If you do, don't forget to leave a like. There will be a live going up with this later in the on in the week. Unfortunately, because I'm away this week, I won't be able to react to any of the suggested changes. But I would still appreciate any suggested changes that you do have. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the team. And I will see you guys at the next one. McCaddy out.